Hello, tiny people living in the confines of my computer. I'm Finn, and uh, today's sort of a serious episode. I'm sure I'll make jokes, considering I always do, but uh, today we're just sitting and we're talking about something that's kind of important. Uh, I'm moving. Uh, it could be a while, uh, but it's happening. I'm I'm not stuck here forever. I get to I get to move. For those who don't know, I've had a lot of issues with where I live. Uh, not only for the confines I'm stuck in. Uh, huh, that's funny. For the groups that I'm forced to cooperate cooperate with, and forced to allow in my life when I shouldn't. The people that are in my life that are bad for me. The things around me that are negative. The the parameters I'm, I'm forced to sit and be a part of. Uh, groups that I'm forced to show support. Uh, a religion that I'm forced to abide by when I don't agree with most of it. And then people I live with being overwhelmingly bad, not just to me and those around me, but also to the groups that I care for. Um, but with all that terrible stuff and then lots more that I, some some things I've talked about, some things I haven't. I'm turning 19 in August and I'm finally at a point where I can where I can get out of the shitty bird's nest that's been left on the ground for me to scurry out of. I'm finally being given the opportunity to be around people who are like-minded. People who I don't have to take care of by myself, people who I don't have to baby, people who I don't have to be the only adult around, people who I can trust not only with who I am and what I believe in, but also with being around overall. I don't have to censor myself or force a, a fake personality or harm myself mentally or physically to be around. People who I can genuinely just be myself with for the first time in my entire life. Uh, when I hit record for this specific recording, I didn't know... Like, I knew what I was talking about, because it's the, it's the me moving video, but I didn't... I don't know what I want to say. I don't know what stuff I want to bring up, what stuff I don't what information I want to throw at the wall right now. Um, I've had a not-so-easy life. Mm -hmm. um, ever since I was an infant, it's been difficult. Uh, rather it be my parents fighting and then their eventual divorce. Uh, me not having a father up until now. Uh, my mother being a drug addict up until I was 13, 14. And then her not really being in my life until I was about 15. Uh, short bouts of homelessness. I never went like months or anything. But there's been days where I didn't have a place to go. Um, mostly days that I don't remember because I was so young and a lot of times when you're that young and trauma happens, you sort of block it, uh, which just, I can't tell if I, I... It's a good thing and it's a bad thing. It's good that I can't look back on those terrible times, but it's bad that I can't point at them and say that this is what's wrong. Uh... But there's a lot of stuff from my childhood that I just don't know because of things like that. Um, 
in almost all of my my issues with childhood, even up to right now, are familial. Um, I haven't said this online. I've been on YouTube for t almost 12 years uh, in October. Uh, not on this channel, but overall. And I, uh, I've never brought this up because I never really wanted to. But now I, I have a community that I trust and that I like being open and honest with. And I feel like I can bring it up. I brought it up in the community discord over the past week because I had gotten close enough with some of those guys to where I can talk about it jokingly without it being such a downer. Um, but now I'm finally going to actually talk about it. Um, When I was, uh, when I was about 10 years old, uh, my uncle, who I will not name because he is still in my life, uh, not by my choice, but because of my family just being around me, um, he violated uh, me destroyed my trust and um, molested me. Uh, he did that on two separate occasions between me being 10 and 11. Um, And that sucks, and it's terrible, and it still kind of hurts. It's still kind of a thing that when I think about I get a little teary-eyed. My voice gets a little shaky, and I kind of have to take a minute. Uh, and... Even, even though that happened, my family has allowed him to be part of my life. Allowed him to be close to me and many of my younger uh, siblings and my cousins. Even, even though a lot of people in my family have heard this information from me, they don't care. They either try to cover it up out of fear of him being in trouble, or they're of the party that think that it doesn't count as that, considering I'm biologically male. It's that conservative idea of you're a man, therefore that cannot happen to you. Which is harmful uh, to men all over the world, but it's also harmful to me specifically on the level of I'm just not one of those either. Uh, And that's a good example of why I need to get away. My family has known that information for almost a decade. Because I'm turning 19 and that was when I was 10. So they've, they've known that information since I was about 11. So they've known it for seven-ish years. And they don't care. The, the only one who's shown me any sort of care or even a response to that is my mother.
and the only reason she cares uh, is because it it was under like her roof like it was in her home and she felt guilty about it and I have never blamed her or anything but it that's how she sees it and that's kind of why she cares I'm gonna try to get away from that point uh I live in Arkansas, which is uh, notorious for being one of, if not the most, conservative places in America. Um, if you want a taste of how conservative uh, Arkansas is, um, the city of Zinc, Z-I-N-C, is uh, multiple times listed as the most racist place on the entire planet, uh, and it's about an hour and a half, maybe somewhere between an, an hour and three hours away from me. Um, in my high school, there were uh, a lot of situations where people of color were often ostracized or pushed away. There were a lot of situations where women were not allowed to be parts of certain things. Um, there was a very big disdain and discomfort towards uh, queer people. So much so that there was a conversion therapy styled camp set up in my high school during summer for a year. But because they didn't force anyone to go and it was more of a thing of just like, it's here it, nobody could really do anything about it due to the fact that they didn't force anyone. Uh, and those are just little examples of how conservative people here are. Um, and I myself am not at all. I... How do I start this? My family is incredibly racist. Um, and I don't mean like, oh, they, they are friendly with others, but they're not super nice about it or anything. No, my family is like openly racist. My, my father is the type to hurl hard R's at people. Um, my grandma used to call me and my cousin, uh, she used to call us her, her, uh, the Spanish word for this, uh, because we did all the work for her, so she would call us that, because she was almost 80 and was like, yeah, it's cool for me to call the people who work for me blacks because that well not really because she was using a much more harsh word but you get it um the uncle that did certain things to me he uh he figured out that one of my cousins was dating a black man and uh his response to this 13 year old girl uh who's just deciding to date a black fella uh, was, if you bring him here, I'm gonna kill him. So, there's the short form of how racist my family is. Uh, which, luckily, I'm not. I, I'm very lucky to have grown as my own person and kind of away from that. Uh... And I'm not perfect or anything, but, like, I don't, I don't partake in that language. I don't partake in the hatred of people of color or people of different, like, backgrounds. They hate some white people for being from other places, which is something that I've never heard of before. 
up until like they explained it to me. Uh, but I'm really lucky and glad that I never picked up on that. Um, they're also big on uh, homophobia. So much so that uh, when I was, I think, nine years old, maybe ten, something around that, I came home from school and I made a joke calling someone gay. And because, you know, how old would it, that'd be 10 years ago so what 2014 yeah I was making I was making fun of gay people at that point I'm gay now I'm allowed to say that uh, but I came home and I made some gay joke and they went off on me for like an hour uh, and then told me that if I was friendly to gay people I would go to hell uh, not even if I was gay if you're friends with them you're going to hell is what I was told for like an hour and they ranted to me and stuff. So that was fun. Um, and just anything like that. If you can think of something racist or homophobic or transphobic or sexist, anything like that, I've probably heard it 150 times in the past two months. Uh, which is fun and definitely helpful and very progressive. Um, alongside that sort of stuff they're also very ableist I guess is the right term they're very mean towards the idea of people that are either mentally ill or neurodivergent either of those two camps uh, my dad for example doesn't believe in depression he thinks it's a choice. Uh, so that's fun to hear when, like, when I'm on, like, my last leg and I am not feeling good whatsoever and instead of hearing something positive or affirming or helpful, it's, oh, well, you're choosing that. That's a choice that you're making currently. So that's fun. Um, for those who don't know, I'm, I'm a ball of autism. Uh, and my family on... The area I live with, my mom has a bunch of autistic kids, so she she gets it. Like, two of her children are nonverbal, and then she has me. And if you've seen my stuff before, you know I'm a ball of just pure neurodivergency. Um, but coming home and trying to tell the people I live with, hey, here's why I do this thing that you keep pointing out. And they're like, no, that's not true. That's not real. That's an excuse. All right. I, I don't like arguing about it because it just causes me to feel more and more of like an imposter syndrome about who I am. Uh, also, I think about the South. Lord, do people just replace the word stupid with retarded a lot? YouTube bots, if you're seeing this, I'm autistic. Don't flag my video for me saying retard. Thanks. Uh, but they, they use, like, that term a lot. Like, just anything small that they don't like, it's like, instead of calling it dumb, they just hurl retarded at, the, at, at that thing. Uh, which is harmful when I'm mentally retarded. And then also me explaining, like, hey, you guys have been pointing out these things about, like, me freaking out over noise and certain lights and certain sounds and, like, people overlapping in speech and all this stuff. And then talking about, like, geez, kid, are you ever going to get over, like, these uh, superhero cartoons you've been watching since you were two? Or are you ever going to get past the, like, weird things you do where, like, you have to make everything match? If you pop that hand, you got to pop this hand. If you flick that light, you got to flick this light. Like, what's the deal with all that? And then I finally come home with a diagnosis of, like, hey, look, here is the reason I do these things that you've been pointing out since I was, like, four. No, that's wrong. That's untrue. That's fucked up and a lie. Okay. Cool. Thanks. That helps me feel better about who I am and makes it easier to open up and be honest with you people. Um, speaking of opening up and being honest with them, it's time to open the can of worms that is me not being a straight white dude. 
Holy fuck. What? Finn, you're telling me you're not a, a cisgendered man? No. So, if, if you want the full history of my awakening into homosexuality and whatnot, and being trans and all that, and all them buzzwords, go watch my video called Trans Problems that I posted this past weekend, uh, if you're watching this now. If not, it's the final video in the big package of stuff called Sagame, S hyphen G-A-Y hyphen M, all capital, it's a playlist. Um, cause I go, th I go through the whole history of, of my awakening and all that there. Um, but, uh, the long and short of it is, I'm not straight. And nobody, my, my sister knows. I, one person in my family knows, and it's my little sister. Uh, and I didn't hurl that at like a nine year old. She's almost an adult. Don't, don't do that thing. The random conservative person watching this right now, don't do that thing where like, you hurled that on a kid, you're harming our youth. Shut up. Almost an adult. They helped me figure it out. I didn't push it on them. Uh, but overall, nobody in my personal life other than my best friend, my former partners, and my sister know. And none of my former partners talk to me. Uh, so it's my best friend and my sister. Those are the only people that really know it. Um, and I've only really known it for a while. Well, I've known it for a long time, but I've kind of pushed it aside and been like, that's wrong. I'm going to go to hell. Uh, but yeah, I'm gay. And they, they do not like that at all. Like at all. They are not cool with that. Like, uh, my sister... Uh, had a phase. I don't want to call it that because it, cause it kind of makes it sound negative. My sister went through a point where she wanted to date women. Uh, and my mother was respectful about it. She didn't necessarily like become a huge fan of it uh, as a woman of God. She kind of like eh, about it, but she was respectful enough to allow her child to experiment. Um, uh, and we we had a rule where we weren't allowed to tell my dad because we were genuinely worried that he would, like, freak the fuck out. Uh, so, to be blunt, uh, blunt uh, I can't tell these people that I am gay. I also can't tell them that I'm trans. I'm a woman. I know, it's crazy. I even shaved. Aren't I pretty? Hmm. Pay no attention to my lazy eye. <laughs> but, uh... You know. And... To the person watching this, and in your head you're like, Oh! That's shit, man. That, that sucks. I'm sorry. That's a lot, and I'm sorry you've got through that. Uh, this isn't like a tenth of the stuff I can talk about. I'll probably talk more about it after I move with Amadon. Shout, shout the fuck out to Amadon, by the way, for getting a home for me and him to live in. And also for being my best friend for almost ten years. For for being there for me, for being the only person I've been able to go to about these things. So shout out to that motherfucker and thank you for being my best friend. I love you with like every fiber of my being. Um, but after I move, I feel like I'll be able to talk about it more without the worry of somebody overhearing or the worry of having to, like, hide the fact I do this from people. I, uh... Yeah, for, for now I'm done talking about it. Not because I don't have more to say, but because... the stuff I said. But also, 
I can't make more videos about it if I talk about it all right now. <laughs> um, so I'm going to end this recording. I've got other things I need to record, other things I need to figure out for the future. Uh, um, last thing I'm going to say is take care of yourselves. Drink water, eat food, make sure to actually be sleeping. Genuinely take care of yourself. Ask your friends and family how they're doing because you never know what somebody's feeling. Give somebody a hug today. Tell someone you care about them and stay safe. I love you fuckers and thank you for all you've done for me. We're this close to 400 subs as of me recording this. We're at like 397. So thank you guys all for your support, for your love, for what you've said to me. Check out my Twitter. Check out the community Discord where you can hang out with me and some friends all the fucking time. We're always here to chat. Uh, love you guys, and thank you so, so fucking much for all you do for me.